mercury recovery systems. All the vacuums that we've discussed up to this point contain either a HEPA or an ULPA filter designed to take care of particulate issues. With mercury, we're dealing with a toxic vapor, so the machines behind me now are equipped with charcoal filters activated to absorb the toxic vapor that mercury gives off. And we have a number of different sizes that are available for our end users, 15 gallon or 6 gallon. All right, let's get this mercury vacuum put together. What do you say? One thing I want to talk about, though, before we put all the stacks and all the filters in place is, with our system, you're able to either dispose of or recover the mercury. Here's how that works. If you want to recover the mercury, you put in place this accessory. It's called a separator. When, when you attach your hose onto the intake, vacuum up that heavy bead of mercury, it's going to come into this accessory, hit a metal plate that we've put inside, and that mercury is going to drop to the jar. You then cap it for easy disposal. If you do not want to recover the mercury and you want to dispose of it, you take the separator off, you put the hose directly into the intake, and vacuum your debris into the collector bag. You've seen the same collector bag in all the other vacuums that we manufacture. Let's put this thing in place. Simply attach our collector bag onto the down tube. There's the gasket. Totally sealed. Let's put the rest of the filters in place. This looks familiar, doesn't it? The filter protector? Absolutely. We've used this in a number of machines prior. But this is going to be placed around the cloth filter bag. Again, you've seen this before, but this one looks a little different, doesn't it? It's a silky material. This is a very important filter in the mercury vacuum. Let me explain what happens and why we have this in place. Mercury is very heavy. In order to get that bead up from the floor through the hose and either into the collector jar or disposable bag, we need a tremendous amount of airflow to get that accomplished. We have very powerful vacuum motors here. But once that bead enters the canister, we need to then absorb that vapor. That charcoal filter needs some time to do that. Guess what this does? It slows the air movement down in the canister, giving the charcoal filter the adequate time it needs to absorb that vapor. So then the rest of the exhaust air comes out nice and clean. So the silky material goes in place around the cloth filter bag. We then put in place the filter protector, like so. Drape it around the inside. Make sure it's seated in properly. We then add our first stack. What the stack is going to enable us to do is put on the remaining filters, nice and tight. We then put the charcoal filter in place. Now, let me tell you something about this thing. There's 30 usable hours to this charcoal filter. So here's what we recommend our end users do. When they're done using the vacuum, simply take this module out of the vacuum, put it in a sealed plastic bag, getting it out of the ambient air, then it stops working. This is how they get the life out of this filter. Put it in place. Put our next stack in. Make sure that it's clamped down tightly. We then have the ULPA filter. You've seen it before, haven't you? ULPA pre-filter sleeve. Put it in place. Lid assembly. Make sure that it's seated in, clamp it down, we're off to the races.